Yeah, hello and welcome back to the channel. Um, see behind me there, I have the XMID 2 out in some very, very windy weather. Now, I'm crouching down because I've got uh, a, a big rock behind us here that's uh, stopping the camera from blowing over. Uh, that's the XMID I had that the walking pole went through the roof. And what I'm trying to do today is recreate um, the issue that I had with it when it went through. Now, the wind today, uh, I took a, a wind reading that's gusts up to 30 mile an hour. In all fairness, that tent shouldn't be out in gusts of uh, 30 mile an hour. I, I, I don't believe uh, that it's built up for that uh, in no shape or form. Yeah, so when I was setting the tent up, I didn't catch it on film. Uh, I, I, it, was a, it was a bit of a lull in the battle with the wind, so I, I tried to get up as quick as possible. Now, in these winds, uh, we had, uh, a tent like that uh, that's going to be difficult to put up in high winds to be fair um, as I said the, 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 the gusts here are, are between 15 to I think at 20 25 mile an hour um, if you can hear what's blown about in the background I've got a plastic bag over the camera if it does take a dive <laughs> it's, it's not going to get ruined like the last one um, yeah so when I was setting the tent up Two times it came off uh, the poles, it, it, it blew loose off the actual pegs uh, and the pegs come right out of the holes and right into the side of the tent. Didn't puncture it as the, the tent was actually blown in the wind. So what I've done is I've double pegged the front, which I would normally do uh, uh, in high winds. So on the front part of it, it's got double pegs on all the, 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 the tie-in points here. Right, in a minute we'll take a wee walk round and have a look at the tent. The wind's pushing the nose down, so I've, I've, I've got it as it should be with the nose sort of, well, the, the largest facing corner there facing into the wind. Uh, I believe that is the, the right way to have it. If it isn't, please let me know. And you can see she's quite a bit into the actual, actual ground there. Now, the ground it's on, it's not flat. You're never going to get it flat. Uh, and you can see it's taking quite a bit of a battering. see on the top there you can actually see try and hold this and the microphone at the same time you can see here that is the titanium tip uh, of my walking pole that's coming through and this is the one so this is the one that I've repaired so the pole came through here uh, I cut a bit off the bag which is the same color as that uh, and then I've, I've sealed it in there Again, that's the titanium tip of the pole there. Yeah, I'd, I'll keep these shut. I don't think these would be open. I haven't got the inner attached uh, tent uh, because <laughs> I want to keep that. If I lose that, it, uh, it's no great shakes. I've got the solid, um, and if uh, if it does blow away. It's gone. So there's a, a lot of movement, but it's hanging in there. Right, as you see here, that's what double pegging is. So you put the first peg in, you see a lot of movement on that. And then using the tie that's on there, you put another peg in. So you've actually got two pegs holding it. And I've done that there and here and over in that corner. I haven't done it at the back. I've just done it in those, the, the, the areas that's facing the wind. Um, the little tie that I had there, it's, it snapped um, the minute I put it on, so I've lost that. Now, if you can see there, the, the tent is oscillating slightly on the ground. You can see it going up and down and up and down. I believe that's what happened. Um, my tent got picked up, the pole moved, and then it, it slammed it back down on top of it and went through. Now, I've got those poles on 120, believe it or not. The, the gaps here, unfortunately, it's just the way the ground is, and, and you're never going to get that uh, perfect pitch anyway. See, I was going on around this side. Yeah, still hanging in there. Obviously, I've got the extra 
guy lines on there just to help it slightly. It seems to be holding on there. Hasn't came off. Now some people say uh, with this tent you should actually leave it kind of loose, don't put it too tight and you won't get the poles uh, going through it. Um, I wouldn't say this is overly tight. I have made sure it's a bit, you get a bit of movement in here, a bit of movement on the sides there, uh, because I believe that they've got a good point there because I, I had it quite tight when the, the pole went through it. Now, putting this up in this wind, um, that, it, was, it was a struggle, not gonna lie. It was an absolute struggle. It did come out quite a few times. The actual roof there is taking a bit of a bit of a battering, but it's hanging on in there. Yeah, I've got the 20, 24 there. Yeah, so, so it varies slightly, but the tent, you, you can see there, it's a lot of movement. A lot of actual physical movement in it. Right, we'll get the MSR up and see how much movement uh, is in that when it's up. Right, as you can see there, a bit of a disaster. X-Mid is still there. The um, MSR Alexia, the wind, a gust just came straight in and snapped that pole that you can see sticking up there. Got a sleeve on there and I'll continue to put the tent up. I did have a bit of an inkling that this was going to happen uh, after watching the, the American fellow My Life Outdoors. Uh, he did done extensive tests on, um, on a lot of tents. Actually, the MSR did really well on it uh, compared to the rest. But the uh, X-Mid is still there and still hanging on in there. Right, I'll get this, I'll get this repaired and get it back up. You can see the X-Mid's taking it. Um, I don't know what it would be like inside. Just moving quite quite a bit. But it's still hanging on in there. The elixir, now it's all pegged down in. You can see you've got a, a bit of um, movement this side here with the wind, which is probably hitting off the the flat at the inner, which was what we experienced uh, the last time we were in bad weather. We got this part of the tent here soaked through into the, the inside but looking at it a lot more movement in the, the X-Mid but it still hasn't failed on the the poles the MSR the pole snapped when I was assembling it and there is no other way to assemble it there, there, there's no way that I could have avoided the, the wind pushing that down and snapping it. Um, but there you go. You live and learn. Yeah, it's about an hour before the, the, the supposedly very, very high winds are due in. So, we'll see what happens then. Yeah, we're up to 30 mile an hour winds now. We should make it a bit more interesting on the tents. Yeah, you can see a lot more movement there. They are taking a bit of a battering. I mean, ideally, if you were camping out in this, you'd be the other side of that little... Uh, I think it's a trick point that's up there, out of the wind. Or in fact, further down into the, the woods, down in there, into the valley. But so far, 30 mile an hour winds. The X-Mid hasn't popped a peg, it hasn't come out the top yet. Yeah, yeah that one, right, so that one there. 
the circles there and the pegs there, so it is sitting on the peg. Yeah, it's not. So that's that's popped off. I'm not too sure if that one's still on. It does look like a good bit of pressure on it. Have a look inside, see if this one's still, if it's on the, the little brass eyelet or not. Yes, it's still on it. It is still there. It has not come off. Which tent would you rather be in? That's the question. Now obviously, we knew these conditions were coming, so you wouldn't actually be out in them, if you had any sense. Um, and the way that the X-Mid's taken the wind on that side, that's why when it came down to it on the Pennine Way, the, the, the inside of the, the solid that I had uh, was soaking wet, and then it froze up the next day as the temperatures dropped. Uh, and uh, it wasn't that cold, to be honest, because um, I dropped down into, uh, into the valley when it was a bit warmer. But certainly, if I was up on a feature any any sort during that week, I would have been in trouble. And what I mean by trouble, that the, the, there'd have been water in the tent, and it would not have been would not have been nice. And if you're getting yellow weather warnings, and um, minus ten weather forecast it is really time uh, to call it a day there's no medals <laughs> for doing stuff like that it's, it's your safety and anybody else's safety who has to come and find you uh, hence that's why I'm no longer on the Penning Way one of the main things that went wrong was my phone um, and the first day, second day it was, the rain was just, it was just like this, but non-stop, high winds. My phone got wet, uh, and there's water got in somewhere. And then it just wouldn't, wouldn't connect. It kept telling me there's no SIM card in it, so I had no means of communication. It wouldn't connect to the Zolio that I had, my uh, satellite communicator, which, on hindsight now with the Zolio, if your phone goes down, all you can do is hit the emergency button. So you can't actually you can't actually um, text someone to tell them that you're okay and where you are, etc. Uh, which was a bit of a a bit of a thing that I didn't think about when I went and bought it. Um, probably thinking now with a Garmin, at least you can send text messages from the actual uh, in reach mini. But that's just something to consider. Uh, what's your backup if your phone goes? Especially if you've got the, the, the Zolio. It's starting to take a good battering now. The wind's actually starting to blow me a bit. That was the, the 30 mile an hour winds have just come in and then I heard a pop and the MSR has gone. The pegs are still in, still double attached. It's just given in on the, uh, the frame with the wind. Go around this side. That's where it snapped. There, that's got the brace in it, so that's just came down in its own accord with the wind. Let's see if I can.
Nope, that's a fail. So the MSR Elixir 2 has failed in the wind. Uh, and the 30, sorry, the 40 mile an hour wind it was, it wasn't 30, it was 40. And the XMID. It's still standing. How bizarre is that? You would think it would be completely opposite. I'll go and have a try, see if I can fix and tighten up the the MSR. Um, but I'm not I'm not holding out much hope because it, it seems to be that the, the poles look like they're going to snap at the back as well and not be a complete failure. Right, really surprised at that. But it hasn't snapped where it snapped before at this end. It's sort of imploded at this side. Right, gonna give this a try, see if I can um, try hold this microphone and camera at the same time, see if I can fix it. Right, managed to pick it up and I've managed to pick it up and I've tightened it up here. Basically, these are just the uh, basically the poles have just inverted on their cell with the wind, which is not great. I would not have expected that. Let's have a wee look at the X mid. It's still going. 40 mile an hour winds, guys. Well, in and out, 40 mile an hour gusts. But the MSR just looks like it's it's going to go in again. But the x -Mid, I am really, really surprised. I Pleasantly surprised, however, would it be your go-to tent to take out in these weather conditions? Now I have got the, the Yonshon 2 with me, um, but I'm not going to put that out. The Yonshon 2 is, is, is a lower profile than the XMID, uh, to be fair. It's got a longer sort of no state when you look at it at this angle. Up oh, there goes the MSR, it's going again. I think the guys who told me, well, the the chaps that told me to leave it slack on the XMID, they're absolutely right. Because the MSR is a, a, you can cinch it right down at the bottom there till it holds the shape. But that's sort of hanging on in there just with the wind, it's just moving with the wind. Where does the MSR look like it's going to implode again? I did see a video a, a few years ago of a chap that got caught out in one of these and it was the same thing. The, the nose of it would just, would blow in. Uh, and the access, it's only got a single pole. So uh, I wonder what difference that would make. But yeah. X-Mid still bouncing away. Still a bit of movement on the pegs but they're both Still double pegged, still there.
Yeah, can't help the, the shaky camera work here, guys. I'm getting blown about. Yeah, it makes you wonder. Oh, there it goes. It's going down. In a bigger gust, the, the MSR's fallen. I'd be very surprised at this, I think. I think everybody's money would be on the, um, the X-Mid to go first. And to be fair, the X-Mid's been up longer than the MSR. Right, so that's nearly four hours the X-Mid's been up in the weather. And it's still hanging on in there. The MSR, it's had a broken pole and it's imploded once. Let's see if we can get it imploding again. I wonder if it's because it's just too, it's too rigid. Yeah, it's going it's, it's gonna to go. Well, I think Mr. Durston will be um, quite pleased with this. But again, I, I, I stress, this is just a test on the tents. I was seeing if I could try and um, recreate the pole going through the tent, which obviously I had it too tight. And I think that's what's done it. I had it way, way, way too tight. And then to see how it fares up against a, a, a UK brand that's quite popular. So you would actually think that a freestanding tent would be better than a trick and pull tent. Depends what freestanding tent you have, to be honest. Uh, if you come up here with uh, like a Hilleberg or something like that, you, you have no problems whatsoever. Yeah, the wind's really picking up now. I'm, I'm all right here, I'm about a mile away from the car. So there's nothing, nothing untoward can happen. If I lose a tent, I lose a tent. Now I'm looking at the MSR and I'm thinking, what could you, what can you use to stop that from happening? I would think where the guy line is, I would probably put a trekking pole in there to hold it up to stop that from going back, or maybe actually attach another guy line to that front and then have two points of uh, contact with it, two points to, to pin it in. Right, I'll give it another 30 minutes and then I will take them down and then get myself to somewhere where I can do a little summary of what what's happened in 40 mile an hour winds. Let's get this down. I don't know what's the easiest way to do this in this weather. Yeah, it's still on there.
the safest way is work. Oh my god, these pegs are bent. Wow. It took a bit of a... A bit of a, a beating. And I think the safest way is work for the back forward. I think. Definitely think double pegging it does has helped it quite a bit. doesn't help when I, when I get stuck in these pegs. Come on. <laughs> Dear God. Yeah, pretty solid in. But I use the same pegs on the MSR. As I did on the X-Mid. Uh, Sandy's not going to be happy with me drying all these tents out tonight. There's probably a lot of people at the minute with the, with the, bad, the cold weather. <coughs> Condensation's really bad where we're living at the moment. I mean really bad. Yeah, that shows you how strong the wind is. I'll tell you what, I'm not going to enjoy taking the MSR down. I think I might lose it. <laughs> not me personally, it's just a tent. I think with this tent I might unhook the poles at the back so it falls flat uh, and unhook the ones in the centre here so it's off the fly so I can just drop them straight down because uh, there's no way I'm going to be able to take this off into the wind. As this tent gets older, it's the fly sheet, the actual gutter here keeps getting caught in the actual zip. Um, and the, the newer newer one that we've got we don't have that issue because it's quite still quite rigid. But if I undo these, I should be able to drop it straight. Hopefully straight down without any without losing it too much. Right, slacken this off a bit. Yeah, 
Yeah, they're, they're under quite a bit of tension. One leg out, or one, one pull out. And that's the other one. And this should just drop, hopefully. Yeah. There's a little, little brace uh, for the broken part. Right, so the downside to this is the inner is actually attached to the poles. So I'm going to have to unhook that before I can take it out. Which I could have done inside the tent, to be fair. Um, a lot of people say you can't pitch out a first in this tent, but you can. Absolutely you can. I've done it on several occasions. And if you're lucky, if you've got someone like Sandy, who's tiny, she can get in and get the old, um, get it all hooked up in there without much, much of an issue. So I'll get some of these attached. Right. Out. I think that's that side done. All right, it'll be interesting to see how wet um, the center is from that side. Helping with that broken bit much. Oh, yeah, it's soaking. Yeah, the, the inner of the MSR is soaking wet. It wasn't really part of the test, but um, as I haven't got an inner in the XMID. Yeah, these are they're in a bad way. Yeah. So you can see that that's a, the tent, the actual pegs. Uh, sorry, you can see that the actual poles are bent. It's kind of written this tent off. So you can see here the waters came straight through this side. Um, some of it must have been when it, when it actually broke and fell down. Uh, but this is the issue we had before when we were driving rain. When you face this tent into the wind. Uh, it goes straight, straight through and underneath. Um, but to be fair, the XMID, uh, we didn't have the inner in that, and uh, I've experienced the same thing. As soon as your fly touches the inner, you, you, you're going to get water through, um, which is why you've got the more expensive tents that are a bit more uh, rigid, and they've got that gap all the way around. Right. Need to get this packed away. The weather is getting really miserable. Oh, miserable than it was. Yeah, that's me back in the car. What's the biggest takeaway from that little exercise? Don't go out in that weather. <laughs> Don't be camping in 40 mile an hour winds. That's probably the, the the biggest takeaway I've got from it. As you can hear, it's still blowing a hoolie out there. Yeah, I mean that was the, the big thing when the weather changed uh, on the the Pennine Way. Uh, going over Kinder Scout and the, the, the winds and the rain just come in. The, the conditions underfoot weren't fantastic. Um, 
Once again in the valley, um, it was absolutely fine. Uh, pitched the tent up that night. But the next morning, when it was frozen, yeah, that was that was type two fun. Um, the electrical equipment failing, yeah, that's how they done it in as well. But the tent, uh, what the X-Med solid, yeah, the only issue I had was when the, the, again the inner uh, was frozen to the fly sheet. Uh, what's the way around that? Ooh. That was a two person I'm in, I could probably undone that side and maybe pegged it in away from the the side that was being pushed down in the wind. I think that's the only work round I could have had uh, for it. Uh, between the two tents being up there and uh, up to 40 mile an hour winds, well, I'm, su I'm surprised that the, the X-Med took it, survived. Um, and it was still going strong when I took it down uh, and I think the key to that is, is don't make the tent too tight don't cinch it in too, too rigid I think that's where I went wrong up in Scotland when the, the, the walking pole went through it um, I, I remember watching the, the wind went underneath lifted the tent up and then slammed it down and the pole just went straight through it um, but that's, that's, that's a lesson learned for that the, the Alexia, yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen those uh, type of freestanding frames do that on several videos or on uh, YouTube, several uh, prominent uh, YouTubers out there have got plenty of videos of, of, of them imploding and pushing in the way in that kind of weather. Righty, yeah, I had to get out of there, the, 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 the trees did not look good at all. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you've got any comments, please leave them down below and I shall see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.